Welcome back everyone. We thought we'd take some time to put together another short video that focuses on our soybean plot and what a food plot this has turned out to be. We disked once in the spring and I mean, we recognize there are two camps of people here. Those who are dead set against tilling soil and those who see the practice as acceptable. For us, we don't have an operable drill, so we have to disc. So we disc this soil one last time prior to planting. From there, it was time for the ever popular rock party, after which then we're on to broadcasting the seed. Now we'll talk a little bit later about the specific beans that we planted this year to give you some more detail about that. Along the edge of the plot, we decided to give Whitetail Institute's newest product, Conceal, a try. You can see here as I broadcast that seed, Joel continued call to packing to ensure adequate seed to soil contact. We planted in advance of rain, so the boys and I hung out the next day watching game and taking care of odds and ends around camp. Eight days later, we had a good stand of beans established. Typically, when broadcasting soybean seeds, the general rule of thumb is to throw anywhere from 75 to 100 pounds per acre, as opposed to only 50 pounds if you were drilling them. However, in our case, we decided to go with 55 pounds, which is the equivalent of 140,000 seeds. And as you can see, our germination and plant spacing is spot on. Establishing a good stand of soybeans can be extremely challenging, as the young cotyledons are highly susceptible to browsing. If a deer nips the young plants at this stage, it is quite simply game over for the plant because there is absolutely no regeneration possible. If you plant a freestanding plot of soybeans without the protection of an exclusion fence, by all accounts it should be at least an acre in size. Our plot here is just shy of that, so we're going to employ our exclusion fence for at least a month. Now, depending on the weather conditions and how well the plants take off, we may extend that protected time frame beyond 30 days. To protect soybeans, you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need a grounding rod and charging unit, a car battery if you're not in a position to tap into a power source via extension cords, a collection of plastic stakes, and your poly tape or wire. Here you can see where we made a simple spooling rack out of 1x4s with a rod through the middle which makes it easy to distribute and collect our near mile of tape. We did an entire video on our exclusion fence that we'll link to in the video description down below and also up above if you want to click up here and check it out. The fence itself is pretty straightforward. You've got posts in the ground that support the tape and a charging unit that sends current through the line. It's nothing too terribly exciting. That is until a turkey takes flight. This soybean field looks awesome. The plants themselves are a good six, seven inches tall. Uh, germination rate looks great. Seed spacing looks good. We're about two and a half now, almost three weeks post planting. And aside from some grass competition, really happy so far. Now in, in years past, this would have presented a bit of a challenge for us because we were planting the non-GMO varieties and we didn't want to spray, but we decided this year we were going to because we really wanted to 
produce the tonnage that we could out of these. So we got a, a uh, Roundup Ready variety this year. And we got it from one of our local seed suppliers in Avis, Pennsylvania. They are uh, local seeds. And before that, the company was called uh, TA Seeds. And prior to that, it was Dobler's. Um, I've known Taylor for probably 25 years now, 20 or 25 years. And, and his dad, Ted, started, uh, started the company. Really can't go wrong with their stuff. So we decided, let's try some soybeans from them. And now, like I said, now they are called uh, local seeds. They're part of a conglomerate of local farmers. And this variety is uh, ZS4256 GTS, uh, which stands for the ZS is Zone Select. 4256 is a variety. And uh, the GTS is glyphosate tolerant seed. So really happy that we're gonna be able to spray it this year have a pure stand of soybeans. And the zone for this variety is, I believe, 4.2. So we're looking at about 100 to, or 120 to 125 days for maturity. So we should get some, some good uh, forage production and then some beans after that. As you can see, the exclusion fence has been up uh, for the last two and a half weeks now. And I mean, up here, uh, Probably out of the last three weeks, 20 days, I would say we've been up here about uh, more than half of it. And during the day, during the evening, and in the middle of the night, I've been out here with a flashlight checking this out. We have had no deer inside this fence, even though at the very end, you can see we ran out of the tape to put up the third string. And I was a little reluctant about that. I was gonna kind of tighten and shorten this fence up to make sure we had that full set. But so far we're good. Uh, I'm hoping the deer and turkeys have been conditioned to know when they see this fence, stay out. So later today, I'm gonna come in here with uh, some glyph, spray this down, get rid of all this grass, and just have a pure stand of soybeans. We are now seven weeks post-plant, and you can clearly see the pressure deer are putting on the beans outside of the fence. They've browsed nearly every possible forage component from the plant right up to that fence line. Fortunately, everything on the inside of the fence is protected, giving the plants an opportunity to really get established. We dropped the fence after 60 days of solid growth, releasing four tons of exceptional high quality forage to a population of anxious whitetails eager to see what was next on the smorgasbord. By the end of summer, the forage component will be all but exhausted. At that point though, the bean pods will have matured at the end of the growing season and we'll be looking at another ton of high quality food going into winter. That's a lot of food for one acre. Under the right conditions, soybeans can be an excellent option for food plots. Give them a try and see what you think. And as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments down below and we'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.